Hi, I'm Kerry and I'm going to share with you 10 tips for building an amazing landing page. So, tip number one is do an attention grabbing headline. So this is really important. Um, so if you're put, putting your page, so for example, it's an article or it's a sales page or anything like that, obviously you're going to share that on social media or other places. Um, make sure it's got a good description. Think about being creative. So in the past, there was lots of, say for example, if it was an article, there's lots of these kind of listicles or how to or top 10 and the internet just exploded with those. So they are no longer as clickable as they once were. So it's all about being creative. Um, it's all about being different. Think about what your audience needs most and that will get their attention. Yeah, think about what they're thinking about at the time. What are they, what are they struggling with in their life? What do they need that your product or service offers them? Yeah, um, and split test it. So choose a couple of different headlines. Um, write a couple of different creative ways to you know position this product or service, and just choose different options and test them. So your audience will go to one, and then they'll go to another, and you'll be able to see which one has the most engagement. So, second tip is open with a question. So when you're writing your copy, it's always good to start with a question because then that, that draws, that further draws the audience in and makes them really think. So it might be something like, imagine if you could free up your time and work remotely, what would that do for you? So that's one. Or if you could read anything, what would it be? Something like that. Right, so you're you're just you're breaking the audience's mental barriers, and you're getting them into the realms of possibility, and you're getting to think that you're getting them to think and imagine their potential desired state or their future self or whatever this product or service will get them. Yeah, so that's tip number two. Tip number three is choose your visual carefully. So there's some amazing sites out there like unsplash.com, Pexels, which are royalty free, and I've got some stunning images on there. Um, all the kind of image trends now are going towards this documentary, reportage, very natural, very stylish, not posed at all, um, stock photos. So you probably noticed that over even the last five years, but certainly in the last 10, stock photos used to be, you know, white background, cheesy smiles to the camera. I'm a business person and I'm, you know, shaking your hand, we're doing a business deal or something like that. Um, but no, not anymore. You know, just as things change so much, you know, photography and the style of things change. So it's always really important to kind of choose your image because 90% of when we look at a page um, and make a decision on a product or anything is subconscious. You know, it goes in very, very quickly. So it's all about the mood and the, the feel of your page as much as it is the copy. So again, test, test a couple of different images and think about, you know, how that image sits with the various colors on your page and your brand. Think about the, the mood and that feel of the image and and how it makes you feel, that's really, really important because, you know, we're getting in touch with the feeling here and we're, we want to pass that feeling on to, to the customer. So tip number four, break up your page into sections. So whatever kind of page it is, we don't want reams and reams and reams and reams of content. We just want to break it up into sections because quite a lot of people will view your page on the mobile or they'll be on an iPad. And most of the time, if you think about when you're reading stuff, we skim, we scroll, you know, there's so much information out there. Sometimes we just wanna to get to the good bits, so we just scroll. Uh, so it's really important to break your um, text into sections. Subheadings are really important, as well as bolding text as well. If there's a particular message that you want the audience to just take away and get into their minds. Um, so that's tip number four is break things up into sections. Tip number five is include small call to actions as well as one big call to action, which I'll go into soon. Um, but small call to actions are, are basically small things that you want the user to do. So say they're on your site. This, isn't, this may be the first time they've ever been on your site. They don't know anything about you. But you want to keep them there, yeah? You don't just want them to be bored and just go off somewhere else. 
You want them to maybe find out a bit more about you. You maybe want them to watch one of your videos. Um, you maybe want them to kind of read a news piece that you've written or an article or something like that. So include links to your other content. Um, just intrigue the user to kind of find out more about you. And this also builds trust as well in, in your business and your product or service. You can test the call to actions as well. So test using them, you know, maybe lower down the page, test them with different colors. Does a blue button work better than a gray button? Does a bigger button higher up the page convert better than something that's right down at the bottom of the page? So just have a play around with um, how best you know, your, your page works, especially if it's a, a landing or sales page. So tip number six is uh, link to your other content. So I've kind of discussed that uh, briefly there, but what this does is it builds trust. So if someone's buying from you, all they've got to go on is your online presence. Um, so the more information you give them, the better, you know, and in different forms as well. So you might have um, a podcast, you might have a video, you might have an article, you might have a, a link to even your LinkedIn profile, um, you could have a link to your article that's published on the Huffington Post, whatever that might be. The more kind of links you can give that person, the better because it allows them to trust in you, it allows them to trust in your business, it allows them to trust in your product or service. And chances are, most of the time, there's other things floating out in the ether that we think, oh, I didn't put that on the website, I got some local press coverage, I didn't put this on my website. All of this builds trust, so make sure that you collate it uh, and put it in a page and you can, you can link to those different um, parts of your website in your page as well. So tip number seven, <laughs> I can count. Make sure content is optimized. So um, SEO is really important. So obviously you've got your headline, which you need to be creative, but then also have your keywords in. So it's a fine balance to incorporate the two, um, your H1s, your header tags, um, and then obviously your description, and then your alt tags as well for your images. Don't forget to add those and add the description of your images. And then also what's really important is your meta description. So this is what comes up in Google. So if someone searches for something, it'll be the header of your, your title of your page, and then it'll be probably two to three sentences um, with what your page is about. Now, obviously keywords are really important there, but it also has to you know, be a bit interesting and make people want to click as well. So really, really important and something to think about. If you're using something like uh, WordPress, for example, there's a great plugin called Yoast and that has kind of got a traffic light system. So that can tell you whether your pages are optimized. So it can be read of like, you need to do some serious work here. Goes to amber, okay, you know, you could pass by or green, you know, your page is fully optimized and people are gonna, are gonna find it in the search engines. So number eight, think what's in it for me. And I don't mean you, I mean, think what's in it for them because this is what your customer will be thinking all the time as they look through your page and it won't be a conscious thing it'll be totally subconscious they'll be thinking mm, well what's in it for me what's in it for me and at any point they can make that snap decision to just go off the page think I'm bored and just go on to something else um, so you've always got to be thinking okay well is this relevant is this relevant to the end user or I'm just am I just adding unnecessary words here you know is this really important to the user? Um, does this give them all the information? And remember, a landing, especially for a landing or sales page, the intention is not to give everything. The intention is almost like a shop window. It's a teaser. It's like, you know, seeing a dress or seeing something in a shop window. You can see it, you know, but, you know, you, you want to go in. You want to explore more. You want to investigate. So that's really important. Number nine. <laughs> be conversational really conversational because in the past um, content on the web was very formal it was very business like because that's just how we did business you know everything used to be quite formal um, but nowadays things are becoming more and more informal and I always say that writing on the web um, gets the most engagement when you're just yourself and you're you know adopting a conversational tone so to help you with this, think about how you talk to people when you go to networking events. So say, for example, you've got a cupcake business. How do you talk to people when you're at a networking event? Or how do you talk to your customers when you're in the shop? How do you explain you know, your latest cake or something that you've designed? 
just use that style and use the words that you'd used and you know sometimes it's difficult because it's so unconscious but maybe just you know record yourself or write things down or get somebody else to observe you of the kind of words and language you're using and your your mannerisms your tone because people buy from people at the end of the day so it's really really important to you know be friendly and to be conversational in the past there used to be these very long lead sales pages with you'll get this, this, and this, but wait, there's more. You'll also get this. And whilst I think they work to a point, I think sometimes they come across as, I'm just selling to you. This is what you'll get. And the intention is purely sales. But I think with this kind of conversational tone is, yep, this is what you could buy, but my intention is to help you. Um, So it's all about adopting that conversational tone. Tip number 10. Final tip is end with an action, call to action. So this has to be uh, the number one clearest thing on your page because if you've got, if you've explained your amazing event, maybe you've done a uh, attention grabbing headline of, you know, a DJ that you've got, you know, you've put a little bit of content in there, you've put a video, all that kind of thing. Somebody's really, really engaged and they think, yeah, great, I want to come. Um, then there's no link to buy the tickets or you don't know when, you know, how to subscribe or anything like that. There's no purchase page. It then becomes uh, very confusing. And you're likely to lose that person. So always think call to action. Think, what is the next step I want my user to take after they've read this? And it might not even be buy. You might not even be at the end of that funnel, at the end of that sales cycle process. It might just be, um, well, I want them to find out more. So I want them to read this next article or I want them to subscribe to my newsletter because I'm building up my email list. Or it might just be, um, I want them to watch one of my videos or follow me on Twitter or whatever those things are. So get very clear on your call to action and make sure um, it's easily identifiable. So it's in bold or it's in a button, something like that. So that's it. That's my 10 tips for building a great web page.